Hi, I'm Lucy, and in this video, we're going to look at bar graphs. Data can be completely overwhelming. I want to investigate how population has changed in these cities. But these numbers are just numbers. They don't mean anything to me. In a table like this, the data can be a little tricky to compare and to really get a feel for. In this video, we're going to discover how great bar graphs are for providing us with a clear visual, which is easy to read and interpret. So looking at this bar graph, we can now easily compare the populations of these cities in 2016. It clearly shows us that London is about one quarter the size of Tokyo. Or we could even have all three years on one bar graph and compare the changes. We can easily see that some cities have only had a small population change, whereas other cities like Shanghai have a much larger change. Bar graphs are used to compare the amounts or frequencies of different things. So for comparing different populations or frequencies, the taller the bar, the higher the frequency. Heart disease and cancer clearly cause many more deaths than anything else does. The bar graph can be this way, or it can also be horizontal. Both are correct and are equally clear and easy to read. A bar graph should always have a title that makes it clear what's being shown, and labels on the axes. Most important are the bars. See how they are all the same width? and there is a gap between each bar. Most bar graphs have this gap because the data is discrete. You're either in one group or in another group. There are some special bar graphs where the bars do touch, called histograms, which we'll look at in another video. Our frequency axis then needs to go up by equal amounts. On this one, we've gone up by 10 every time. So let's turn this data into a bar graph. And it looks like this. The frequency needs to go up to at least 3,500. And I've put lines in every 500. We could have gone for lines every 100 instead, for example. Work out what best fits into the space available and the data you're working with. So back to the data. 3,500 football fans means the bar is this high. From the bar graph, can you work out how many field hockey, tennis and baseball fans there are worldwide? Pause the video and give it a go. Did you get them right? Here are some questions for you to do. Pause the video, work them out, click play when you're ready. How did you get on? There we have bar graphs. They're really useful for comparing different sets of data between different groups. The higher the bar, the greater its value. And they can either be vertical or horizontal. Watch our video on pie charts to see an alternative method for displaying and comparing data. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe. Comment below if you have any questions. Why not check out our Fuseco app as well? Until next time.